your check-in. Kind of a lot has gone on, um, which you may or may not have figured out if you have read any of the comments on my, well, anything I've been posting on my Instagram. Um, but I want to start off with some happy notes before I get to the not-so-fun stuff. Last time I talked in a video about food, I was saying that I was having issues trying to keep on track when I don't have control over my dinner when I'm not the one doing the cooking, which is pretty much never right now, except for I get to do about two meals a week that I get to plan, including my meal prepped lunches. Those I'm very glad I have control over. In the past two weeks, I decided since I cannot control my dinner, I was going to control the meals that I did have, and so I stopped eating the same breakfast as my husband and son were, and I've switched over to having a protein shake for breakfast. I used to do that for lunch, and then it leave me feeling bleh, but it seems to be really, really working out as a breakfast option, especially because I changed my workout schedule a while ago to having uh, a workout about an hour and a half to two hours after my breakfast. It seems that a protein shake is great fuel for either my weights or for a run, which has been fantastic. And that seems to have really been just helping, um, helping me, and maybe it's just the sense of control, I don't know, but it, it's been pretty okay. Um, I've also decided to, as a challenge to myself, nothing that I hold myself strictly to, aiming for ve vegan or vegetarian uh, before six. Now, I, I had mentioned this in another video, and I had wanted to just do it for like a rest day. I've been doing, of course, more research, so I'm confident that I can actually make that work. Uh, one, and two, like I said, not always strict. I mean, this entire week, my lunch had turkey, ground turkey in it. Wasn't even thinking when I picked that for our meal. Um, but the reason that I actually like doing that is because it makes me way more mindful of what I'm putting into my mouth and makes me way, way less uh, likely to nibble and snack because I'm, you know, attempting to hold to something. It doesn't always work and I'm not going to be mad at myself for not being perfect about it. Uh, so that actually seems to have been working great for me. Uh, training seems to be right on track for my 5k and 10k. Um, it's been warm enough that I was going to the gym because my sister reminded me that um, when it's warmer outside, although I really disagree with the, the man that she got the advice from about actual temperatures, but when it's warmer outside you're supposed to slow your pace. Um, and with everything else that's been going on, I really didn't want to push it with pushing my body in the heat. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, the weather's supposed to cool off a tiny, from what I understand. And also, you know, things are going to be different in a couple of weeks for me now. Now that events have transpired. Ping. And of course, I've been changing up my weight training uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, I was very amused. I took one week off of Bob's 45-minute kettlebell training, something that was feeling incredibly slow to me, and I was changing it up with double Zuska workouts or a Zuska and a Jillian, you know, just something like that. So I was still spending the same amount of time, but, you know, not the same, same, same. Well, I did it again recently, and, oh boy, I couldn't walk the next day. And I was just like, did I go deeper? What the hell? <laughs> it was a surprise to me. It was, it was funny. Um... And again, it's to me why it's important to change things up and not get stuck into too much of a groove. And I've been considering doing uh, Jillian Michaels' body revolution again, but instead of doing her cardio, I'll be doing my my uh, C2 5K, Couch to 5K uh, runs instead. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you may have noticed that I uh, very quickly dropped out of uh, Way in Monday this past, uh, these past couple of weeks, and that all of February I was very disappointed with what was going on and feeling very much like I had managed to start failing already, even though I wasn't 
feeling like I was failing everything else like I normally do. Normally when I fail, I feel like it's a giant spiral, and this time it really just didn't seem that way. Some of you may remember, if you were, again, following me on Instagram, I can't remember if I mentioned this in a video or not, um, that uh, probably at the beginning of February, um, I had some really intense heart palpitations. I, um, on occasion, I experience them. They're usually associated with great times of stress and anxiety for me. After a couple of days of the really intense palpitations, my mom, uh, trying to be helpful, looked up uh, causes of palpitations. And dear lordy, everything causes palpitations. Exercise causes it. Pregnancy causes it. And anxiety causes it. it. Like, just this long laundry list. And I was sitting there going, so you're saying that they're annoying, but they're okay? You know, they're not going to kill me unless I experience these other symptoms too, because, oh dear God, why did you tell me symptoms? My brain is going to manifest these now. After the third day of having uh, palpitations and uh, waking up to nurse my son and realizing that I couldn't stand the feeling of him touching me anymore to breastfeed, I realized that maybe it was time to take a pregnancy test. I, at that point, I think I was only five days late, and it came out negative. So I was like, okay, this is just my period being stupid again. And uh, the palpitations kind of tapered off, but, you know, they were there, but they had tapered off um, so that they weren't as distracting and feeling as debilitating, and I continued with my life. I, you know, I exercised, I ate. So fast forward a week later, um, or, not even fast forward a whole week later, about three days after that, I felt cramps, and I was excited because I thought, okay, it's finally happening, and I had, like, the tiniest bit of blood, and I know. So I was just like, oh, okay, it's going to start, I've got the cramps, I've got the, the spotting, I'll be, you know, I'll be in, in pain, in misery tomorrow, and, and then life will go on. And then I wasn't. And so a few days after that, about midweek, I was like, okay, I'm officially like a week and a half pregnant now, or pregnant, I'm a week and a half late now, why don't I try a pregnancy test and then I couldn't remember and I put it by the toilet so that I would remember in the morning um, which did not work because you know you close your eyes when you're going in for your first morning thing and my bathroom is on the inside so I don't have any natural light coming in so of course it's nice and dark and I'm not looking around I know where everything is and, <laughs> and I peed and then I had that that moment where I'm sure people have experienced this, you know, you know it's a stupid idea, but you don't know it until you've done it. I took out the pregnancy test and I stuck it in the water and, and then, you know, it came up negative. I figured, okay, that was my dumbass move. Uh, let's go stock up on 99 cent store pregnancy tests because they do work and they're cheap and I don't need something fancy. I just need something that can tell me what I need to know. So... Um, we grabbed a bunch and I, you know, we went and spent the weekend with my mother-in-law. She has most of our stuff in storage for us and we decided it was time to go through everything and maybe downsize, try to downsize. Um, so the first morning we were there, I took a pregnancy test, or I tried to, but it seemed that the strip, because it was one of those strips that you dip in the cup, um, did not want to uptake anything. It was just sitting there going at me. It, it was literally just nothing seemed to be moving up to the area it said it was supposed to be uh, moistening. And it was just like, eh, okay, we'll try again tomorrow morning. So the next morning, I took another test. Pretty much immediately. Bing, bing. There it was. I was just like, okay, well, I've had a bunch of negatives, you know, I've done some dumbass things. I'm going to take a, the, another one tomorrow to make sure that this is not a faulty test because there are such things as false positives. And in the next morning, I took a pregnancy test and, well, looky, it, it hit. It wasn't just a, a, we'll think about it, as soon as it moistened up, bing, bing. It, there was no thinking about it. There was no laying it on a flat surface or anything. It was just bing, bing, again. 
and I was just like, okay, well then, crap. I didn't want to have to deal with this. I made probably one of the hardest decisions for me to have ever made in my life. And it was one I was really hoping I'd never have to make, and it was one that I was hoping a miracle would finally come around. I was not necessarily worried about the monetary implications of having a second child. Um, I have a great community of friends and family who supported me the first time I came home broken and with nothing. Um, I do not like the idea of having a second child when neither one of us has steady income. The major problem was is that I find it a little inappropriate to try to grow our family when we're still living with my parents who do not have room for us to expand as a family. Um, not to blame them or anything, it's just that's what the circumstances are. So I made an appointment. An appointment that uh, turned out was not an easy, you know, I could have it in two days. Um, it, the next appointment was for a week and a half. So I had a week and a half to sit and dither. Sit and think and think and think and think. And, and it... Uh, I spoke to a couple of friends about this. I, you know, this was not actually a hasty decision, but it is still the one that I think is the best, even though, again, it's one of the most hardest things I've ever had to do, and, and I'm probably going to be very sad about it for a very long time. In the end, I really couldn't. I felt that. I just felt that this was not the time. I know I don't have to explain any of this to any of you. I could have just simply said I got pregnant and then I had an abortion, but since I want to be honest, especially about emotions and how it affects um, weight loss journeys, I, I thought that I would share that it was something that I struggled with, but in the end I still came to the conclusion it was the best meal for my family right now. Um, I've been crying about it all day because my appointment was earlier today. Um, it's something I've been crying over for days, actually, but I have uh, I nearly had a complete meltdown outside of the clinic today because I'm just so sad about this. The timing, other than the lack of space and income, the timing was actually pretty okay for everything else that I had wanted when it came to us having a family and having a second child, and I'm just very sad about the whole thing. I, it doesn't seem real yet. Um, And for those of you who are of the snarkier uh, set when it comes to the idea of uh, adopting, that I would not have had any support in that decision. And if you want to call me weak-willed, um, go right ahead. Um, but I don't think I could have taken months of of, of everybody, my family, my friends, disagreeing with that decision to give up my child. Um, I don't think I would have dealt well with that to begin with. It's, it's one thing to have only been six weeks pregnant and not actually gotten attached and gotten to know and grow a child, but that still makes me sad, but to give my child away to somebody else to raise It 
it's not for me. And this was fully my fault. I'm not, you know, cursing the skies that we were being so careful. Um, I, I, in fact, had a bit of a of a Gur arc moment because when I got pregnant with my son, we had been having unprotected sex for months because we were being stupid. We were being very angry at the world, and um, and ever since the insurance snafu that began last year at the end of August and me trying to sort things out. You know, I haven't been on my own personal birth control. Um, my plan had been, okay, go to Planned Parenthood and get um, contraceptives again because, you know, I'd done it for years. It was what kept me from being uh, a young mother, most likely, you know. Not to mention, I really like the regularness that it provides to my otherwise irregular periods. I found out that Planned Parenthood had been, had been voted to be def defunded and I figured with the snafu concerning how much money we were making which kicked us off of uh, the insurance to begin with, um, you know, I didn't know how easily it would now be to obtain um, my hormonal birth control so we decided to go to condoms because they are known to work. Um, and those I don't need a prescription for, and I figured we could, you know, we could do condoms until it was, <laughs> we could do condoms until I could get my hormonal birth control again, and, you know, best laid plans. This worked for months for us, and, and in January, you know, it was like this one-time thing. You know, we were caught up in the moment, and I've heard of, had previous other problems when it came to this thought, oh, fine, you know, it's, it's just the once. Haha. <laughs> Haha, -ha, me. <laughs> um, some of sorting out the insurance is merely my problem with, uh, I think about these things, when phone hours are over. I don't know why. Um, I've, I've just had this issue where I keep forgetting that I want to, to deal with this because other things in life are, are taking a priority and, you know, so it's been a much slower process than I've meant to and, you know, I recently somehow magically lost a very important piece of paper, which I'm fairly certain my son moved and I'm really hoping he did not throw away. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying this wasn't my fault, and I'm not saying that it was a sign that it was time to have another kid, um, it's just, it's one of those things, and as soon as I realized I was pregnant, I stopped weighing, weighing myself, um, because of, uh, how, how much I've been fluctuating. I stopped taking, uh, my Monday photos because, um, everything had already started expanding, which, you know, was crazy. It's like I wore a pair of pants that three weeks ago fit just fine, and now they're, ugh. I've been... My diet has not been wonderful in the last week, week and a half. Um, it seems that right around the time that uh, I confirmed I was pregnant, the lethargy hit. I wanted to sleep even more than I'd already been tired and sleepy. Um, and then it turned into the, oh my god, that food sounds disgusting, get all food away from me. And then snap all of a sudden, I'd be so ravenous. And, and it always seems that every time I made a healthier choice, I was never satisfied. I'm sure that was some sort of mental thing. It was just I was trying so hard to, you know, work with it and work with it until until I wasn't pregnant anymore. And so that didn't really seem to work out as much as I'd like to. I mean, it's not like I've already gained a ton of weight. 
but I can tell that my not eating so great has affected things, and I just more or less have given myself February off from uh, the progress I had wanted to make as far as actual weight loss or um, inches lost because, well, pregnant bodies really don't agree with it when you try to have a, a calorie deficit or when you try to only eat specific things. Um, well, okay. You know what I mean. It's like <laughs> pregnant women who are dieting are usually not very happy women. And even though I wasn't planning on keeping the pregnancy, I thought as long as my body is pregnant, I should take care of it as though it's pregnant because otherwise I'm going to be even more miserable than I already am. Uh, here's hoping that, that there's no unforeseen complications from this and here's really hoping that my sadness doesn't spiral into a depression that makes me stop doing everything. I think part of my concerns right now is the fact that this is not something that I can share with a lot of people in my day-to-day -day life. My parents are very against abortion and I don't know how badly they'd react. Um, and since, since our relationship is tenuous at best, especially um, for adults living under one roof and every one of them being very adult opinionated, um, I don't know how my sister would react. Um, that's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, and I, at this point, I really don't want to find out. She's got a lot on her plate. And I have my support system. I did not do this behind my husband's back either. He knows he was unhappy about it. Not about my decision. He agreed with my decision that it was right for our family right now, but he's not happy that it had to be the right decision. So, from... Right now, I'm just trying to look forward to heal and to continue to grow in my journey and just as a person because, well, I'm not dead, so theoretically that is supposed to be something you aim for for the rest of your life. So I'm planning on resuming my way in Mondays in another week, so not this coming Monday, but the week after that. So, so here is, bye for now, and I will talk to you guys soon.